people often have questions about fasting and how can you go more than, let's say, a day or two without food. So right now, I'm on my 16th day of fasting without food, and I have a bit of experience with this, and so I want to share some of those insights. So first, before we begin, let's start with a little bit of harmony. So there are a few aspects to fasting that allows you to go through that process more successfully. And so what I mean by that is when you go without food for an extended period of time, there can be things that occur with your body that could cause stress and that could cause you to uh, back away from the process of fasting. And so I don't think that, I don't think that um, there's really anyone who cannot do fasting, okay? So I kind of paused when I said that because I'm thinking through some of the conversations I have been exposed to in the past and even videos that I've seen from some very, um, um, well-known content creators when it comes to a spiritual aspect of fasting. And I've heard statements such as, you know, I don't think I have the discipline or the mastery of my body to be able to fast. And I disagree with that. I fundamentally disagree that it requires this major mojo, immense, type of mastery to do it. And so the, the few things that I can give as pointers is that number one, practice makes perfect or practice helps a lot, right? So it starts with practice and one meet and jump into a long fast of, let's say, I would consider a long fast actually to be about five to seven days. So to me, five to seven days is a long fast. And so that's the minimum long fast. A good intro to fasting or long-term fasting is about three days. But three days can still be challenging in and of itself. And so the ideal thing is to uh, jump into uh, one day and half day fasts. And those are very easy to tackle and address. And so practice is going to be the first step, right? You just do it little bit, little bit at a time. And before you know it, you have, it, um, you, you have a good rhythm in terms of how you do fasting. So... I have gathered quite a bit of practice in fasting. I, prior to 2022, yes, 2022, I'm starting to lose track of the years here, but prior to 2022, the last fast that I did was in 2015. And I did a couple of fasts spread over a couple of years prior to that, uh, prior to 2015. So somewhere between uh, 2003 and 2015, I had done three, four, and five day fasts. So that was all well and good, but 
those were done for religious reasons when I was part of a religion. And in 2022, when I exited um, religious practice, I was doing fasting for other reasons. But I'm not actually going to go into all of that here, right? Because I have videos about that. You, I have videos about that. This is more of a simple discussion that is going to talk more about the actual things you can do, right? Things that I do. So what am I doing in fasting right now, right? So my day begins with distilled water. So I'm going to show you an example of what I mean by that. So this is distilled water, right? So distilled water, distilled water is water that, let's say you, you boil up a pot of water, right? So you boil a pot of water, and I'm simplifying it, just so it's very easy to grasp what it essentially is, because anybody can make distilled water. I just don't make it. But you can, uh, you can take a pot, and when you fill the pot up with uh, water, then what happens is the water starts boiling, and then the water vapors, the steam, you can collect that steam, right? You can collect that steam, and then when you collect that steam, and if you do it at a slant, right, then what's going to happen is that steam, that steam liquid is going to roll off into something else, right? So you can roll it off into another pan, for example, and you've created distilled water. You can roll it off into a cup or a jar, however you want to do it. But the advantage of that is that whatever was in that water that was being boiled is going to stay behind. So then what you end up with is water that has nothing but H2O. It has nothing but H2O. So it is the purest water that you can get, but it's also uh, the least helpful water that you can get. And I'm going to explain that in a moment. So distilled water, the way I use it is like this. So I have this flask, right? And so this flask here, it has notches on it for four ounces, eight ounces, 12 ounces, 16 ounces, and 20 ounces and 24 ounces. Then I take the cap off, and this is one of the first things I do to start my day after I have awakened. So I'm going to measure out just four ounces. Okay. Now the thing is, I'm not going to drink this water. I'm not going to drink it at all. Because if I drink distilled water, let's say I fill this up to, what, um, 16 ounces? because I do anywhere between eight to 16 ounces of distilled water. I'm just doing four ounces for demonstration. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these four ounces, I'm gonna pour it in this glass, right? So then what I do with distilled water is I take something like uh, cell food, right? I take cell food and what cell food does it's a chemical formulation that gives oxygen to the cells. You've got to measure it out appropriately. So I'm going to do about eight drops. But if you get a little extra drop here, it, it, it's not going to hurt anything. So got about, got four ounces of distilled water, and now I've mixed in. Uh, cell food formulation and what this cell food formulation does is it oxygenates the cells so it adds oxygen to the cells directly it detoxifies the cells and it removes cellular waste material it removes cellular waste material so you get um, three in one oxygen directly to the cells 
remove toxins out of the cells and removal of waste material that cells generate. Now you can do the same thing with uh, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Keep in mind, I am not consuming solid food. If this was a solid food fruit-based fast, a frugator, frug, frugator fast, frugivore, a frugivore fast, then blueberries would be a, a way of starting the day and getting oxygen into your cells and into your body. But I needed an alternative to that and cell food combined with distilled water was a way of doing it. So distilled water is used as a carrier for other chemicals. That's what distilled water is best for. If you drink distilled water by itself, distilled water has a tendency to draw out toxins. It's a great thing, but it also does more than any other liquid that I know of to dilute your body. And that can be, that, that can not work so well when you're trying to maintain electrolytes, right? You can do um, about eight, eight ounces to about 12 ounces of cell food three times a day. I don't do that um, because I just want to do it once. So I do up to 16 ounces usually, or I might, um, I might do 24 ounces on a given day. And then I'm gonna fill this up, right? I'm gonna fill this up and I'm gonna put the appropriate formula, formula uh, formulation of cell food. The directions are on the back of this. It tells you how many drops per eight ounces. Okay, so I do the appropriate number of drops and I just do eight drops per eight ounces. So, you know, if I do 16 ounces, I'm doing 16 drops. If I do um, 24 ounces, right, then you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, 24 drops. So it's pretty straightforward. That's how I do it. You don't have to be precise with it. In some cases, you have to. Um, in some cases, you might benefit from having fewer drops, and in some cases, you might benefit from having more drops. But I stick with the recommended eight drops. Anyway, I fill this up with distilled water, I put in the cell food, and then I put the cap on, right, I put this cap on, and then, you know, I got the strap, and I just carry it with me uh, to work, or if I'm, you know, going out running errands, I just have this with me, and I drink this throughout the day, so I don't drink this in one sitting, right, so it may take, it'll take me the entire day to drink this. It'll take me the entire day to drink this. When I began my fast, I was doing the cell food every single day. So um, I only stopped doing that uh, this week. So about roughly 13 to 14 days, I was doing cell food every single day, right? And then um, I decided I don't need to do that every day. I, I feel good enough that, um, you know, and sometimes you got to give these things a break. If you're doing stuff every single day, your body gets used to it. So I don't want my body to get too used to it where I don't get the benefit. So, you know, I cut it off for maybe two, three days during the week. The other thing that I do to start my day is I use uh, trace minerals. Trace minerals. So what this does is this gives me electrolytes. So let's measure out four ounces of distilled water. Unlike the cell food, you can, you can overdo the trace minerals. You can overdo it, so read the directions on the back of the bottle. Speaking of which, I like the smaller bottle rather than the larger bottle because the smaller bottle to me works better in terms of the taste and the concentration.
So I'm going to do eight drops. So I typically do it directly into this flask, but just pour this out. All right. So trace minerals, it gives you electrolytes and it gives you approximately 83 trace minerals. And this is good for your body. You know, it gives you magnesium, calcium, potassium, iron, copper, you name it. My taste buds have adjusted to it to where it tastes like milk. This literally tastes like milk. And I don't drink milk, but I can tolerate the milk taste in this case. Right? So, so then the next thing that you can do, right? Th those are what I call liquid supplements. And they're fine, right? But you want to, like I say, not have your body get used to things. So you want to create some variation in this type of fast, this liquid only fast. And so one of the ways is you continue to do, you can continue to do distilled water as a carrier for certain elements, right? As I just shown, that's the beginning and end of distilled water. Spring water. So spring water comes in a couple of varieties. You have the very famous Mountain Valley. And then you got ones like Bonneveau from France, from the French Alps. My last name is French, so there's kind of a connection there. And then you have, you know, something like Eternal, which is from the state of Tennessee. So... Eternal, right? I haven't uh, tasted it yet. I don't know what it tastes like. I've had Bonneval before, and I've had Mountain Valley. Uh, both of those taste great. I really like Bonneval. I know some online reviews, uh, people don't like the taste of Bonneval. You know, it's like a lot of things, you know. Um, uh, tastes are very, very subjective. They're very personal, right? And so you can drink uh, your spring water straight. I wouldn't add anything like cell food or trace uh, mineral drops to spring water because spring water, if it's the right type of spring water, it's already balanced. It's already balanced. And adding more to it, you know, formulations like that can this stabilize the, this, the spring water. And so, yeah. Um, so then, you know, you have your spring waters, right? Now, I don't do, um, I don't do these every day. I do these once in a blue moon. I do these every once in a while, okay? So every once in a while. I go a more practical way with this. So 99% of the time, this is how I do spring water. I do it something like this. I buy the spring water from Walmart or Kroger's and I get it for about $1.50 to $1.80 per gallon. And that is more practical in my opinion, right? So with a gallon of spring water, I don't drink it direct into a glass or anything like that, although you can, it's perfectly fine. But what I like to do is I use spring water during this liquid fast for tea. So I use it for tea. And I'm going to talk about tea separately in a separate video because um, there are some brewing techniques that um, I think are interesting, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate discussion. But I use spring water for 
I use spring water for a tea, for herbal teas, and a variety of other uh, tea concoctions and combinations. And so my other liquid that I look at is coconut water. So I use the Kroger brand coconut water, right? Um, simply organic coconut water. You have it in a box like this, right? And, you know, you get it as a 12 pack. And I just, I store it sitting up just like this. I don't break the box down. I just open it from the top and I, I grab it. I just, I just leave it on the floor and I just grab it as many cartons as I need for the day. My minimum number of cartons that I typically do is about two. I try not to do three because I don't need to. Okay, so simply organic coconut water. Absolutely awesome stuff, in my opinion. The main benefit of the coconut water is the same as the spring water. Proper spring water provides you electrolytes. That's the number one thing you need in a liquid-based fast. Electrolytes will allow you to endure a fast very proficiently. You may still have some weakness, maybe in the knees, right? Maybe you'll feel funny some days, but you won't outright collapse. You will be just fine. But coconut water goes further than spring water in that the dosage of electrolytes is higher. It's naturally higher. And spring water is formed by nature. Coconut water is formed by nature on a whole nother level. We're talking about the sun. We're talking about the earth. We're talking about the trees and the leaves and the soil. They've all contributed to the production of this coconut water. And whereas spring water pulls these elements through a process of the flow of water over the land, right? The levels of minerals that you get, they typically will not have the same balance that you'll have in coconut water. And it's not an either or, right? It's not an either or, right? It's not either spring water or coconut water. What it is, is that coconut water is going to be much more balanced and it's going, to, it's going to feel more complete in your system. When you consume coconut water, it feels more complete in the body. And so it's the number one liquid that is distributed in stores, right? That can be a go-to. It can be the number one go-to, right? Spring water is a good second, but I would rank coconut water as number one. So my fast consists of the coconut water, the spring water, and then as a distant third, the distilled water as a carrier for other elements that are optional, but I am allowing those in for uh, the benefit of elevating health. So what's interesting about uh, coconut water is a couple of things. You can get it in this form. And what's great about the Kroger version of this is that it has no added sugars. I don't do coconut water that has added sugar. It has to be natural to the coconut. 
It has to be organic and non-GMO. And so this meets all three criteria. The only downside to this coconut water, this particular one, is it's an acquired taste. It's a very acquired taste. A very, very acquired taste. So what you may have seen me do in the past is apply cocoa powder to it. Organic, non-GMO cocoa powder. I recommend a health store grade cocoa powder if you're going to do that. I decided not to do that during this fast because I want my liquids to be much more uh, liquids without any solid additives, right? And although the cocoa powder will dissolve, right? I just don't want that, uh, I don't want that uh, dissolution aspect to these liquids. I want the liquids as is, right? So like when I brew tea, the essence of the tea just goes into the water. Pretty straightforward. When I do the trace minerals and I do the cell food, it just goes right into the water. But with cocoa powder, it's a process. It just, it doesn't go straight into the coconut water. It, um, it has to be transformed so that it's an acceptable liquid. And I didn't want a liquid during this fast that I had to do transformations like that. I want it to be pretty straightforward. So, so this is an acquired taste. And if you're not adding uh, cocoa powder to it, and it's perfectly fine if you do, but if you're not adding cocoa powder to it, you're gonna be like wincing sometimes when you when you consume it. But it's perfectly fine. But for those that do want a coconut water that is um, very good, very tasty, and doesn't have this need for you to acclimate yourself to coconut water, there's really only one that I can tell you about. And that is Harmless Harvest. So Harmless Harvest comes in 16 ounce and 32 ounce. I usually do the 16 ounce, but Kroger ran out of it. You can also get it at Walmart, but I like to buy the 16 ounce at Kroger because I can get it on sale. I can get it at a discount with my Kroger Plus membership. And the way this coconut water looks is comes out pink comes out pink so that's how it looks this coconut water it comes out almost clear pretty clear yes so it's clear so that is 10 grams of sugar per serving this one is fourteen grams of sugar per serving okay so right now sitting on the table I got twenty four grams of sugar it's absolutely fine absolutely fine so the USDA in the United States have defined a recommended daily average for sugars I believe to be 10 grams that actually may be the the medical community so there are two types of fasting I I've come up with two classifications two two types of fasting these are, these are my classifications, two, two types of fasting, okay? There's the fasting, right, that is just water, okay? So it's a water-only fast. You do a water-only fast, then you meet the definition of a medical fast. There's a medical, there's a, a United States medical definition for fasting. 
And that definition is that you achieve ketosis. You achieve ketosis. And you do not break the ketosis. And I did that in a previous fast, and it's okay. I thought it was cool. But that is more of a fast, I believe, for people that are trying to pursue fasting for health reasons. Okay? If you're pursuing fasting for health reasons and you want to follow the medical establishment's guidelines on fasting and the research that exists on fasting that focuses on particular aspects such as brain-derived neurotropic factor, ketones, right, where your body is running off, your brain is running off of fats rather than sugars, and you want to maintain a steady rate of autophagy, or at least you want to try to control that, then you would want to stick with the medical community's definition on fasting. If you're fasting for reasons that I would describe as a combination of spirituality and detoxification, then there are other avenues and other ways of fasting that apply to that. That would include fruit fasting, a frugivore fasting, and I would point you in the direction of Yaki, Dr. Yaki, uh, Yaki as in Yaki Awakened. He has immense information on that. And he has very successful stories from his clinical trials and his work in the area of health, wellness, and the recovery of people from certain ailments, symptomologies, etc. So that would be one way to do it. Through fruit, whether it's actual physical fruit or it is fruit juice. Okay? I'm going to drink some of this coconut water here. I'm used to the taste, but I can tell you that if you're not, if you haven't had the Kroger brand coconut water before, you may never get used to the taste unless you just decide, okay, you've programmed your mind and your body to say this is a beneficial element. Actually, I'm going to say something kind of weird here. I'm going to say something kind of weird here. This is the very first time, the very first time that I've actually drunk this out of a glass and it tastes different. Yeah, the glass makes a difference. I like these glasses with the dimples in them. So easy to, to hold. So, the thing of it is, is that um, if you're fasting for detox reasons or spiritual reasons, then what I'm out, what I'm outlining here is more aligned with that. It still has health benefits, but it's more about resetting your body in a way that's more holistic, right? So instead of that image of fasting where you're trekking through the desert with maybe a, a holding a cane or something like that, and you're trekking through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, and you're just struggling and you're just powering through it to get a a message from the divine that's totally valid that is 100 1000 1 million percent valid it's not always necessary to do that what is necessary is to have the purge happen purge physically purge emotionally purge spiritually right and a struggle fast can achieve that this is also a struggle fast you know I don't want to hide anything there will be days where even doing it like this but what this does is it keeps the body in a fortified state and at the same time certain things are eliminated because you're not eating and the longer you go without eating certain things that were not good 
that maybe you consumed, right? Because since my last fast in September, October last year, you know, I went to some restaurants and I've had some foods that had oils that maybe were not good for me, right? I never cooked food here where it had bad oils, but anytime I would eat out, right, in the last couple of months since my previous fast, yes, I was exposed to some oils, right? That was my number one thing that I probably accumulated since my last fast, right? And um, I've had some good food, but, you know, there were aspects to them that, you know, I ate some rice, you know, and, you know, I'm trying to get off of rice. And so I haven't had rice a lot, but I've maybe had, you know, four or five different uh, occasions where I've had rice, right? So since the end of um, October of last year until sometime in February, I've maybe had uh, rice maybe a total of five times, but that to me was five times too many. So anyway, that my diet views are more extreme and we're not here to talk about that, but but yeah, so this is a fast that uh, with liquids, you can stay fortified. You can, And this here, this is the number one way to stay lucid. And yes, I do drink it like medicine. When I'm drinking it, it's like medicine. Take your medicine. So, but... This coconut water, and I know if I drink this right now, whatever ketones I've I've, I've developed since I've ero er arose today, I'm probably gonna break it, but it's fine because I'm not doing ketosis. But this uh, is night and day. This is absolutely fabulous tasting coconut water. And if you add cocoa powder to it, it takes it to a whole nother level. This is absolutely superb. And whereas the clear coconut water can make you lucid, this will definitely have you lucid. This is awesome stuff. So those are the elements of fasting. Those are the tools that you can use to do a liquid fast in 2024 and beyond in the human body and be totally lucid and totally together, right? So now I'm going to talk about some of the difficulties I've ran into. But first, I need to finish this. So, oh, the other thing about Harmless Harvest, not only does it keep you lucid up here, it is the one coconut water that you'll feel going all the way through your body, all the way through, and you will be amped up. So, if you're like me and you work in a job that has quite a bit of physical aspects to it, because I work in a job where I have to stand up all day on my feet, like I'm literally standing up. I rarely uh, get an opportunity to sit down. And in some, some cases I do have an opportunity to sit down, but most of the day is, bent, is spent standing, stooping, lifting boxes, moving um, different uh, boxes from one area to another. I climb ladders, I go up ladders and down ladders, and I'm going in and out of sh shells and all kinds of stuff. So yes, uh, there is a warehouse aspect to the, the work that I do presently. And it, uh, it to some, it's physically demanding. Um, I spent I spent more than a decade in, in uh, warehouse environments, so I'm used to it um, mentally and physically. So, so
So, um, so anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing for me, but, but, uh, when you're not eating food, right. And this is 16 days without food at this point, right. Then it's like, man, where does your energy come from? Coconut water, <laughs> right? See, there's, if you follow the conversation so far, there, there's two parts to what I said. The brain. So how do you not have brain fog? So we, we solve that through either trace mineral drops or coconut water or spring water, right? We got three solutions. And my tea video gives you a fourth, but you got three solutions. You got spring water, coconut water, trace mineral drops. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell you about the fourth one. You also got a tea that maybe like is a lion's mane, ginkgo biloba, go-to cola formulation, right? So, you know, if you get like some lion's mane tea or some reishi mushroom tea or something like that, right? I like to use a tea that uh, has all, has these different mushrooms and things already formulated in the tea. And the essence of that goes into the water, into the spring water. And then that gives me a boost as well as, you know, panic ginseng. Okay. Panic ginseng, P-A-N-A-X, ginseng, panic ginseng. So anyway, those are the four strategies for the, for the brain. So I have defeated brain fog, right? So brain fog is gone. So that's no longer a barrier in fasting. But the second thing, right, is the actual energy. They're not the same. Now, when your brain is, is lucid, and your, your mind is working, then that means you can use willpower even more to override the rest of the body. You absolutely can. But I don't do that because that's just a excess exertion of energy that I feel is unnecessary. And you, you could easily burn yourself out like that. Okay? So then um, the coconut water is what provides the energy. Not only the electrolytes at a foundational basic level, but energy at a much broader level, right? And the harmless harvest in particular uh, does that in one serving. One serving of harmless harvest coconut water does that. And the Kroger um, simply organic coconut water, that does that over the course of a day. So let's say, let's say I get up at four in the morning or six in the morning. Okay. So I start out, let's say seven or eight in the morning, drinking a distilled water formulation, a distilled water formulation. I first start with the cell food and then I start in with the trace mineral drops. That's kind of the order in which I do it because I want that cell food in my body first. I want that to get all in. I want it to have first opportunity. Then um, I'd like to wait 15 minutes to an hour before I do trace mineral drops. I don't want the formulations mixing right away. So spread that out. Okay. So we're at about 8 a.m. at this point, right? So at that point, I might brew some tea and drink the tea. Notice I haven't jumped into coconut water yet. So I'll brew some tea and the tea is going, the early day tea, the early day tea is going to have the lion's mane, panics ginseng, and I'm missing something else. Oh, ginkgo. Yep, at least those three, but there are a few others. But I'll go into that in the tea video. So I'm going to have a, a, a special brew of tea that I make that is going to work on like heightened focus, right? The electrolytes will help with that in a general sense. That gets rid of the brain fog. But I'm talking about the ability to just really focus sharp in a very sharp way. And that's what uh, the lion's mane, ginseng, and ginkgo biloba um, contributes. So then... Around about 9 a.m. Because, you know, yeah, most people have already gone to work by this time. Um, I work in um, 
in, in industry and in a uh, role where most of my work uh, day doesn't start until 12 noon and I get off at 8 p.m. So I work a later shift most of the time. Some days I work 10, 10 a.m. to um, 6 or 7. Um, every once in a while I'm working 8 a.m. to like 3 p.m. But most of the time it's um, 12 noon to 8 p.m. And so I have a little bit of build-up time to get myself ready for that, that shift that I'm going to work. And so my last step before I get ready to go to work is the coconut water, at least an hour to two hours before I go to work, because I want that coconut water to then start working the energy cycle in my body, you see? So when I go in and I start working, right, that energy cycle starts off. It's, it's starting up at a higher verb. Now, depending on how much I exert myself over a two-hour period, it's usually a two-hour period where I can start to see it start to level off. Then if I time the coconut water just right, a second serving of a 10-ounce uh, coconut water from Kroger's, then I'm keeping the energy levels steady. I'm keeping the energy levels steady, right? I did that the last time around I was doing the fast, and it worked very well. I didn't do that this time. Remember what I said earlier? I'm doing this, right? I'm doing this. And I am, and that's filled up with cell food. So I'm consuming cell food most of the day. The downside of that approach, though, is that while I am oxygenating my cells and detoxing my cells and, um, you know, eliminating waste material from my body using that formulation. I'm also diluting those electrolytes. And so my incidence of weakness is much higher during this fast. But I got some good news. You hear that? I'm almost out of this stuff. So I'm actually going to use this all the way to the end, okay? No matter what happens. But I'm only going to do one, one of these, right? And once this is done, that's going to be my cue that um, it's time to cycle out of this fast. And then I'm going to um, get much more intentional with the, um, the, the coconut water, right? So, um, so that's, that's some of the downsides, um, you know, with um, this approach is that if you use the wrong liquid at the wrong time, then you can have some weakness, right, um, in other parts of the body, you know. But I've been able to work through it uh, just fine, and it's, it's all good. Uh, you might ask about my weight. I must be doing something right with the way I'm formulating these and I'm sequencing everything because my weight isn't declining the way it was um, in my September October fast, it's like I'm still kind of steady in my weight, so that's awesome. So I'm detoxing, which is the elimination of excess material at a more steady rhythm. So then, what do I do at the end of the day? When I get off at eight, eight thirty ish, then what I do is, um, you know, some days what I do is. If I don't bring, if I don't bring this, then I bring this. What is in here? This is going to be a full flask of hot tea, right? So I might alternate because I don't do the cell food every single day. I'm going to have some hot tea in here and, you know, and then I'm going to, you know, sip on it. And I usually, you know, leave it in my car or... I, uh, you know, put it up somewhere, but it, this lasts the whole, whole day. And so it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I still got some hot tea waiting for me as I uh, get ready to commute back, right? And so I consume the hot tea and then I then switch, then I'm going to brew another tea once I get settled in for the evening. And that's going to have one particular element that I'm targeting, which is ashwagandha. 
ashwagandha is very useful for helping you go to sleep and helping you ease off. So the tea that I brew at night is completely different than the tea I brew in the earliest part of the day. And so the tea by day, it's about boosting and elevating energy. The tea at night is about winding down and getting it so that we can get into that deep sleep, deep REM cycle. And so when I do it like that, I, I see that I have better physiological balance. And I combine the ash, I, I have a, uh, I use the Tulsi ashwagandha. And I'm gonna show that in the tea video, right? Uh, Tulsi ashwagandha, T-U-L-S-I, and then ashwagandha. And I might mix that with some other teas, right? And then that's a good brew for helping calm everything down, but also providing the benefits of ashwagandha. And then I also um, reduce my social media consumption. And then I turn off all the lights. I sleep in the pitch dark, as dark as I can, right? I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of any of that, right? It's all cool. So I'm very comfortable in the dark. And, you know, with the moonlight peering through windows or whatever, that's, that's awesome. And I try to leave my blinds open so that when the sun comes up, it hits my receptors. But I usually sleep with a sleep mask um, for the majority of my sleep. And I have, you know, those noise canceling headphones. And then, you know, I use uh, Dr. Jeffrey Thompson's uh, Brainwave Entrainment uh, CDs. I have a 20 plus year old walk, Sony Walkman, and um, I got Bose noise canceling headphones, and um, I replaced like the, the aux cord uh, with a new aux cord, because the old aux cord that came with it, um, it, you know, it wear and tear, and the cups wear and tear, but I replaced all of that, so I've had the same uh, noise canceling uh, headphones for a good while, so, because I'm not into replacing stuff, if, if I can fix it and keep it going, you know, my Sony Walkman broke like four times and then I, I fixed it and repaired it. I took it apart, put it back together, all that. So anyway, but that's how I, I conclude the evening. And so um, that's the fasting overview. Those are the things that can be done to achieve uh, more success with fasting. And again, uh, spring water, right? Not necessarily uh, a spring water that, you know, puts you out. But how about something that, you know, you can just uh, use more economically, right? And you can then use that with tea, or you can drink spring water directly. Coconut water, you can drink that directly. And uh, you can take distilled water, uh, formulate it with, um, you know, special additives like the trace mineral drops, right? Or cell food. I, wouldn't com I would not combine these two things together because they, they have the same type of elements or that there's an overlap, right? This has a different concentration of the elements than this does. This has more than this does. And so if you combine these two, then you're actually going to destabilize the formula that, you know, this isn't going to so much negatively affect this, but this added to this is going to make this not work. So that's why you wouldn't combine those. And so thank you for tuning in. And with that, let's have a concluding sound.